Hi wonderful art friends, my name is Chloe Henderson and welcome back to my vlog. Today's vlog is March. Everything that I got up to in March, all of my updates and all of the things that I got to up to in my studio and out of my studio. <laughs> so at the start of this month I went to a bunch of exhibitions. I went to go and see the Audubon's Birds exhibition at the National Museum of Scotland which was really really interesting. Um, we just sort of went on a whim so I wasn't really sure what to expect but it was fantastic. Uh, so you'll see a bunch of vlog clips from there. We also went to the new collections at the um, Modern One over at the Modern Art Gallery in Scotland. Uh, it was a bunch of different things, so everything that they've added to their collection recently. So it was a nice varied exhibition. I really enjoyed seeing all of the things there. And I'm a huge Dali fan and there was a Dali piece there, so that was really exciting as well. And I'll pop some more vlog clips into this as well. I also attempted to do a market at Cafe Queer, but unfortunately on my way there I tripped and twisted my ankle and had to hobble my way down a street so I could get Stuart to pick me up and I just wasn't able to make it unfortunately. Luckily I've all healed up now and my ankle feels fine. I get the occasional twinge but it's not too bad. Um, but that was just a bit of a disaster, <laughs> unfortunately. So I didn't make it to Cafe Queer this time, but I'm hoping to do it in next month in April. So fingers crossed you'll see me at that market. It was also Stuart's birthday in March and we celebrated by going to the uh, Glasgow Science Centre, which was fantastic fun. And I have a few vlog clips from there as well, so you'll be able to see that. And at the end of this month, we did our tabled at the Dumfries Comic Con and that was really fun. Uh, it was a bit of a crack in the car for us to get there, but it was a really nice day. Uh, we got to sit in the sun for a little bit, hang out with all of the traders, and it was so, so busy. Uh, it was really great. Yeah, I had such a great time. So there'll be a few vlog clips from there, but I didn't end up filming that much because we were so busy, but it was a really great time. I really enjoyed that con. And I've got a bunch more coming up next month as well. Uh, so there'll be plenty of Comic-Con clips coming soon. But without much further ado, I will stop rambling and we can get into this proper vlog and you can see all of the wonderful things that I got up to in March. So let's go. So at the start of the month on a whim, on a very rainy day, we decided to pop into the National Museum of Scotland and there was an exhibition titled Birds of America on, so we decided to go check it out. <laughs> So I'll read you the little description uh, on the ticket so you can sort of get an idea of what, what this exhibition was about. So, Birds of America is a landmark work of ornithological illustration. It achieved international renown due to the epic scale of the project and the book's spectacular life-size bird illustrations. The book was the culmination of Audubon's ambition to paint every bird species in North America, which took almost 12 years to complete. It is celebrated for extraordinarily animated, dramatic and detailed illustrations. Today, only 120 complete copies of Birds of America are known to exist and they are rarely on display. This exhibition is a new interpretation of the creation and significance of this incredible, incredible body of work and presents a selection of 46 plates from one of the world's most famous and valuable rare books, Birds of America, by John James Audubon. It was an interesting one for me to visit um, because I recognised a bunch of the illustrations, even though I hadn't heard of Audubon. Um, so it was, it was quite nice to like put a name and put some historical context around some of the illustrations that I was familiar with. What I also really liked about this exhibition is that it talked about some of the controversies in uh, his life um, and it didn't shy away from that. I think quite often when we're like looking at historical figures that did or people that did great things we forget about the maybe uh, problematic elements of their past so it was good to see that covered in this exhibition as well as them talking about how some of his scientific work was surrounded in controversy and some of the discoveries and the illustrations that he did were not completely accurate that was really interesting to see as well but of course the main part of the exhibition was seeing the illustrations and they were stunning really really beautiful illustrations of as many birds as you could think of <laughs> in america of course uh, my favorite was probably the raven um, i really liked that one and then there was the snowy owls which were just sort of bizarre <laughs> looking i don't know they didn't quite look real to me but i just yeah i really liked the illustration as well but yeah i think the ravens were definitely my favorite and then like randomly there were a few uh, illustrations of different animals and the little rats that he uh, illustrated were so adorable and i really loved that portrait 
I really enjoyed this exhibition and it's still on so I'll leave some links in the description down below so you can go and check it out if you live in the Edinburgh area. I definitely recommend it, it was uh, really interesting and a really calming peaceful space so somewhere just for you to sit and enjoy. This month was a good one for exhibition visits as we also went to the Scottish National Gallery of Modern Art to visit their New Arrivals exhibition. Uh, and I'll read you the wee description for that just now so you can see what this exhibition is all about. Presenting a fascinating showcase of the most recent acquisitions at the Scottish National Gallery of Modern Art, this exhibition offers a stunning range of modern and contemporary work, including painting, sculpture, photography, film and more. Spanning 110 years and filling the ground floor of the gallery, thematic displays ranging from evocative landscapes to printmaking and surrealism offer unexpected juxtapositions that will tease out intriguing stories behind the National Collection. With more than 100 artworks to discover, highlights include works by Salvador Dali, Damien Hirst, Peter Doig, Pablo Picasso, Bridget Riley, Jenny Saville, Alberto Whittle and many others. Personally, I was most excited to see works by Dali and Damien Hirst. Uh, they were top of my list when we were wandering around and it was really cool to see them in person. I think what I really liked most about this exhibition is that while the rooms were sort of themed and they'd collected works together that had uh, similar themes or were similar in their materials or what they uh, depicted, it was all a good like random mix of art which I really enjoy uh, being able to see a bunch of different things so you're constantly picking up new bits of inspiration and moving from mood to mood and theme to theme. I really enjoy exhibitions that leave me feeling lots of different things all at once. Uh, it's really nice to flip between different emotions and different stories so this is a really good one for that and again it's still on so I'll leave some links down in the description below and if you're in the Edinburgh area I'd highly recommend going and checking it out because it's very cool and it's a nice little mix of lots of different artwork and definitely uh, one for you to go and see before it's off. <laughs> Laura being super helpful as ever and just sitting on all of the work on my desk. Thanks mate. <laughs> It's just what I needed. And that little pile that he's sitting on is some zines that I've printed out, some little mini zines that are going to be cut up and folded soon, but um, I think these ones are going to come with a little bit of extra cat hair, so I'll need to dust that off. I'm currently trying to edit my one second every day for my 29th year, and uh, Thor is not helping. <laughs> He's just positioned his cute little face, purring and being all adorable right in front of where I'm trying to look <laughs> to be able to see what I'm doing. <laughs> and I really need to move, but uh, he's too adorable, so I can. I'm stuck. <laughs> Last night I took part in the fantastic Rebel Dykes workshop hosted by Glasgow Zine Library where we made uh, our own mini zines inspired by the archives. So this morning I'm just going in to finish it off. This is the little zine that I, I started. I've got my front cover and then my second page and then I've got a bunch of the uh, material that they sent us that I'm going to finish off my zine with just now. Um, so Re Rebel Dykes is a film and I'll read you out the little uh, description of it. Um, a hot, heady, punky, sexy mashup of animation, previously unseen, rare archive footage and new interviews. Rebel Dykes tells the story of a radical 80s scene, squatters, BDSM nightclubs, anti-Thatcher rallies, protests demanding action around AIDS and the fierce ties of chosen families. Uh, and I'll leave a link to it down in the description below where you can check out the film and watch it. I'd highly recommend it, it's fantastic. So this zine making workshop, they sent us a bunch of uh, material from the archives, which is what you can see here. Um, and we were uh, taken through a few little exercises and made a mini zine based on what we found in the archives and what stood out to us. Um, so I'm just finishing off mine just now and I will show you what it looks like when it's finished. So I have just finished my little Rebel Dyke zine. Here it is. Ta-da! Black, white and pink was the theme that I ended up going for. 
so this is my front cover which I decided I wanted to be just a little bit vague because I wasn't sure what I wanted to put inside and I was really struck by these two images so I decided to use them as my front cover and then I just loved this piece of text and it felt sort of relevant to what I was doing because it's like a bit vague but also um, describes basically what's in the scene, I, I, I think, sort of. <laughs> Initially I was really struck by these two images, uh, their similarities and their differences as well as like the really bold text over the top uh, and that inspired this first page. Uh, just thinking about like the censorship of uh, gay lesbian couples um, and how that <laughs> very much impacts like how we're seen in the media um, and I was just thinking about that in this page and this is when the initial pink came into because I wanted to do a bunch of like crosses uh, on the back cover being symbolic of like censorship but also of like kisses <laughs> um, and yeah so I ended up using pink throughout my whole zine because of this first page um, then this next couple of pages there was an article all about uh, ableism and in in the community so I decided that I wanted to just cut and paste lots of bits from that article uh, just the pieces that I was really struck by and then added my own uh, little bits over the top which you can see in the pink it felt really appropriate for this month uh, in in March uh, the theme for coin operated presses zine is chronically iconic um, so we're talking a lot about chronic illness and disability uh, this month over on Coin Operated Press. So having this little piece of the archive included in my pack was uh, really relevant, so I had to make a page all about that. Um, and then this last page, during the workshop, uh, one of the prompts was to pick an image that we were really struck by. So I picked these two images here. Um, and we were just to write for two minutes just to get all of the thoughts out of our head. So this is my little piece of writing. Um, it's not the best piece of writing in the world, it just was a little bit of a stream of consciousness based on these two images, but I decided to include it in the zine um, and just collaged a bunch of images that felt relevant around it and added the big text in pink with March and Stay Proud because as you can see these, these images are from uh, gay pride marches in 1988 it looks like and I think that's the same year although I can't read what the text says but yeah I just really loved the images so I decided to write my little piece of writing all about that and then last but not least it's my final page and I just picked a couple of images that I really wanted to include and wrote a little bit of detail at the top about what the this scene is all about and yeah that's my finished little scene Ta-da! I really like it and I really enjoyed the Zed workshop so thank you Glasgow Zine Library and thank you Rebel Dykes, it was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. At the end of this month I tabled at Dumfries Comic Con uh, which was so much fun. I really really enjoy doing Comic Cons. Dumfries was like a little bit far for us to drive to. We're not, we're maybe like two hours away uh, by car, which is probably the limits of how far we drive for uh, a smaller Comic-Con like this. Maybe travel a little bit further for bigger Comic-Cons, uh, depending on money and, you know, all of the financial situations, because it's expensive to travel. But for this one, uh, we made the effort to, to travel to Dumfries, and Dumfries is a lovely part of the country. And it was a really sunny day, which was <laughs> sort of annoying because we were stuck inside. But when uh, I had my little lunch break and sure had some little breaks, we managed to sit outside in the sunshine and it was really, really nice. Um, I really, I really enjoyed doing Comic Cons. They're so much fun. The people watching's fantastic. I really enjoy seeing everybody in their cosplays. It's really nice having like nerdy chat with people when they come up to my stall because they'll see the drawings that I do and they're like all the fandoms that I enjoy. So then they're like, oh, I like this too. And we have that little connection and it's really, yeah, it's really nice. And I've got my little, um, <laughs> little group of stall holder friends that I chat with every time we're there and Stuart chats with as well and it's nice to see everyone uh, I really enjoy them and I can't wait for the ones that we've got coming up next month <laughs> and that was my vlog for March I hope you enjoyed watching all of my updates and seeing all of the wonderful things that I got up to this past month and I hope you'll stick around and see all of the wonderful things that I'll get up to next month as well do be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss a monthly updates from me as well as all of my art time lapses and tutorials and all of the other wonderful things that I post here on YouTube. Uh, and do give me a little thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, it really helps me boosting the algorithm and all of that nonsense. <laughs> and if you want to see more of what I'm up to, you can follow me on my socials, I am at Chloe on everything, and you can join my Discord, the Sea Slug Artist Collective, which is linked down in the description below. 
And if you really liked what I'm doing and want to support me and help me make more, you can join my Patreon, which is like a wonderful little subscription service where you pay a little bit of money each month and you get fantastic art things from me. But that's all from me for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!